Good morning. Today's announcements are for week beginning with 15th of October and the service you will be watching is from Sunday the 8th of October. Our weekly organisations and activities meet as usual this week and on Thursday the 19th of October the History Group meets at 2.30pm in the Lower Hall. Next Sunday the 22nd of October will be the annual GB and BB enrolment service. These are all the announcements. Good morning. morning. Welcome to our service on this, the 8th of October. Special welcome to anybody who's visiting us this morning, uh, and especially the Reverend Derek Weir, who's with us today. Samaritan's Purse Christmas shoe boxes are ready in the porch for anyone to take home and fill up. They must be brought back by Sunday, October 29th. There are leaflets telling you what you can put in and what not to put in. It's important that we all stick to these guidelines. And please don't fill the boxes too full because they have to be stacked up on top of each other for transit. Our Tuesday Bible studies led by Reverend David Bryce have begun again at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. In this session we'll be studying some of the Psalms and we'd love to see a few more faces at it. Free word for today, Bible reading notes for November to January are now available at the bookstall. Please pick one up if you want one. We invite everyone to share tea and coffee with us in the hall after the service this morning. And please remember to have the car park cleared in good time. <coughs> These are all the announcements. Please stand to receive the word of God. <coughs> Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. It is a really great day, and somebody mentioned to me, did you see the mist on the lock this morning when we arrived? It's going to be a really good day for our GB district parade. It's, the weather's going to be dry, the sun will be out, I'm sure, uh, but it really warms your heart as well to, when, the, when the weather's so good. And, and after yesterday's second day, our second day of prayer here in Joymount, I, I don't know, there's something after you spend time in the prayer room or in the closet, that, I don't know, it just sort of lifts you. I just want to come here today, and I hope you do too. Well, I do know you want to come and give thanks to God. Uh, and there's something very special about giving thanks to God. Our whole service today is focused on this idea of giving thanks, being thankful, and to bringing our praise to God. And we, we, we learn something about that from Psalm 100 because in verse 4 it says enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name now if you've ever heard of a guy called Derek Prince I would listen to quite a lot of podcasts from Derek Prince on prayer and he said there are two different thanksgiving is different from praise thanks thanksgiving is coming to Thank God for various things, for family, for blessings, for, you know, anything that comes to your mind. But praise is where you, there's a different focus where you bring glory, bring glory to God. That you're really, it's going into a more intimate place. And he said, when you give thanks, it allows you to come into the outer courts of the temple. What does it say? Enter his gates. So you're coming through the gates into the outer court of the temple with thanksgiving, but you enter the inner courts with praise because you're drawing closer to God. And that's what we want to do here today. We want to come and give thanks to God, but we want to be bold enough and confident enough in Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, that we can actually come into the most intimate place and bring praise and glory and honour to our great God. So let's take a moment to pray. Father God, we thank you for this privilege to come and lift our hearts to you with thanksgiving and praise. And we ask, Father, that you would help us 
that you would empower us to worship you, to bring glory to your great name. Holy Spirit, come amongst us, we pray, in Jesus' name, and help us bring glory to the Father. Amen. So let's stand and worship God with our first worship piece, The Church's One Foundation. I know for a fact, uh, after a prayer day, there are some little butterflies around this meeting house. And if there's a butterfly on the seat that you have sat on, that little butterfly and that little verse is for you. There's also some little cards, because yesterday, all day yesterday, our focus was in giving thanks and praise to God. And in our time of giving thanks to God, we were thinking about individuals within the church. I don't know what it is about us Northern Iron people. Uh, we find it hard at times to express thanks to people one to one. And and by putting a little butterfly on their seat or a little card with a little note inside it, it's a very easy way to bless others. So that's for you to take away, to put in your Bible and or to stick on your fridge and to remember that. I know over the years that I've had numerous cards of thanks. I've still got every single one of them. And every so often to bring them out and read through them. So let's turn our hearts to God and give thanks to him through prayer. Let's pray. Father, we want to come here and acknowledge that you're the creator of all things. You are the author and perfecter of our faith, Lord Jesus. And we want to just offer our hearts, our all to you this day, to worship you. We want to acknowledge that you are the God of gods and the Lord of lords. And there is no one like you. We want to come together as one people to worship you, to glorify your holy name, to adore you because you are worthy. Father, even on a day like this, early in the morning, the stillness, even in Carrick Fergus at the seafront, is phenomenal. The silence with no motor cars or lorries travelling up the marine highway is almost deafening. And the stillness of the lock and the, the hum of the ships sailing by. 
Father, help us to open our eyes to see the beauty of your creation all around us, even as the leaves change their colours at this time of the year. Father, we can take an opportunity to stop and to bring glory to you, to worship you, to praise you for even the change in the seasons, to know that you are the faithful one for after autumn shall come winter, shall come spring, shall come blessing and summer time too. And so, Lord God, empower us by your Spirit to worship you. We long in our innermost being to praise your holy name because it's programmed into our DNA, because we've been made in your image. And so, Holy Spirit, help us to do that properly, to never forget the benefits that you bestow on each and every single one of us every single day, And not only that, the forgiveness of sins in Jesus, your Son. Father, forgive us because we can be very forgetful. Forgive us, Lord, for our wandering away from your way, from Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Father, bring us back onto the narrow path, we pray. And keep us, keep our eyes, help us to keep our eyes fixed firmly upon the goal in Christ Jesus as he is seated at your right hand, right now interceding for each one of us. So Father, forgive us our sins as we take a moment to confess them to you. Holy Father, you are the one who forgives all our sins, who heals all our diseases, who redeems our lives from the pit, who crowns us with love and compassion, and who satisfies our innermost desires with good things. So that even, Lord God, as we grow older each and every day, our spirits rise up as if we were still Young people, we are young people in your sight because you are the ancient of days. You're the great I am. And we will always be your children. So Father, hear us as we come together as one family here in Joymount and pray those words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite Stephen to come forward, Stephen Drake to come forward and read our first reading. Thank you, Stephen. The reading's from Psalm 95, and it's on page 602. Psalm 95, reading verses 1 to 7. Come, let's sing for joy to the Lord. Let's shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let's bow down and worship. Let's kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Amen. Thank you, Stephen, for reading God's word. Boys and girls, I'll see you down at the front. And if you want to make your way there.
Isn't the weather just great? Look what somebody brought us. Apples, and guess where these apples are from? Well, tough. Tough, sorry, I'll get you something else. Do you like bananas? Do you like oranges? And you don't like your five a day? No, no. Who likes apples? I wonder, do you have enough of Where? Sorry, where do you think these apples came from? <laughs> Did somebody see? That, that's like one of the answers. Did somebody say, I, I watched a wee sort of viral. Shh, uh, from the tree seeds. From the tree seeds originally, that's right. Boys, are there, you're far too smart. You know, I saw Sean Locke say, tell a, a joke. He said uh, he was in traveling to a Korean in Northern Ireland one day. And he said that uh, he got a wee bit lost and he stopped in a village in North Antrim. And he asked, uh, Could you t how, how do you get to Korean? And the boy at the side of the road thought to himself a wee bit and he says, uh, My brother takes me. <laughs> boy, he said, dear. That was like one of those answers. Where do you think these apples are from? God. I heard that. Where are they from? From God? Yeah. yeah, well they are. Take one. Take one. I'm, no, no, I'm sorry, there's only apples. They're really, really good apples. Can I eat one? Yes, go ahead. Does anybody know where these apples have come from? I hope I don't run out of apples. Leslie, I'm running out of apples. Can you go back to the mounds? No, we got plenty. Well, there's, there, there's oh, you don't like one? Hey, you have saved the day. You have saved the day. There's just I, I, enough. I know how you can get more. You, you, you don't just grab the people's seeds out from their own apples. You don't and plant them. them. You're far too smart. Well, tell, tell me this. Shh, shh, shh. Tell me this. Who wants to take? What's your apple like? Yummy. Is it great? Good. Good, because that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about our great God. And uh, tell me this: Can anybody remember what we do here in Joint or Purpose Statement? We come to Jesus to grow in Jesus, to go for Jesus. Isn't that right? We come to grow and to go. And as you eat your apples, hopefully you're growing stronger as well physically. But I want to talk about our great God. See this word great? We use it all the time. Give us some other words that mean great. Amazing. Amazing. Brilliant. Great. Great, great. Is that like great, great grandma or something like that? Yeah. Good. Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. Incredible. Come on, folks. Um, surprising. Surprising. <laughs> we're getting a wee bit. Yeah. Magnificent. Is that what you were going for? Ah, you see, brothers and, and communicato. Yep. The best, best, best. The best, best, best. That's the best one I like. So it is. That's the best one right here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. What about great? Awesome. You didn't get that one, did we? What else? Are you watching here, guys? Awesome. awesome. What's this? Super. Super. There's some of these here might not fit in. Wonderful. Let's see. Cool. Somebody said to me that's real 1980s, that. <laughs> Just shows you my age. Uh, did anybody say brilliant? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Are you sure? I think I said it. What about mega? What does MAGA mean? Gigantic. Gigantic. It means great. It means awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. Incredible. Somebody got that. And our great God. Well, why is God great? Well, Stephen told us. Stephen read this. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Our God, God whom we worship, is greater than any king on this earth. Why? Because he made all things. He made everything in the world. In fact, the stars in the sky 
our great God made. That's why he's awesome. That is why he is just, we can use all these words, and I think the word is, for all us biggie people, is superlatives. Can you say that word? Superlative. Well done. Superlative. He's awesome. So if you look at the screens, this is what our great God is. The Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods, because he is our amazing God. No, what does it say? He is our awesome God. He is our brilliant. He is our awesome. He is our brilliant God. He is our mega God, our cool God. I love that. Do you know, and here, we usually start our service with prayers of praise and thanksgiving. And that's the time for us to use all these big superlatives. These great big words. Awesome. Father God, you are so awesome. Father God, you are brilliant. Father God, you are good. In fact, you are very good. And you are great. You're missing one more. What was that? Strong. He's very strong and mighty, isn't he? What's the strongest good word? Pardon? What's the strongest good word? I don't know. You think about that and come back to me, okay? Yes. He's a reliable God. You see, we've started something here, folks, haven't we? So what's the word that you think of about God when you take time out to pray? Mighty, faithful, let's start shouting them out, folks, come on. Beautiful, Lord, this is great, faithful, merciful, all-knowing, loving. Do you feel the faith, do you feel the love coming up in the church here? The sense of Holy Spirit? Because we from our hearts are declaring who our great God is. And when we do that, he begins to shine in our hearts. And when we leave this place after we come to grow, to go, people see the light of Christ in us, the hope of glory for the whole wide world. Right? There's some chomping going on in the front row here. You didn't tell me where them apples came from. I just said the word. Those apples came from? They came from God. <laughs> Our ma. They came all the way from the Orchard County just yesterday. Uh, so I hope you enjoy them. I had one last night and they are as sweet, as sweet as can be. So we're going to stand. There's a, there's a, did you get it? An apple pip. So I'm going to try and go and plant this. Okay? See if it's going to happen. No, no, no. It needs some soil. Put an apple tree there and an apple tree there. You've got a great imagination, sir. <laughs> I'll plant them out in the back of the... If it comes up, I'll plant it out in the back garden of the months. Okay? So let's stand. We're going to worship God. We'll shine, Jesus, shine. How are we outside the church? Pardon? Outside. Outside church. Good.
So let's take a wee seat first and we'll pray to God. Father, we just sung about coming into your awesome presence. And Father, we thank thee that your presence is here, that you are here by your Holy Spirit. And we pray for the boys and girls as they head out to jam, that your presence would go with them, that you would bless them and their teachers. In Jesus' name, amen. So now you can head off to jam. Jam. Whoa, jam. Did you watch the road? I forgot to say, we're going to worship God as we bring our offering now to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bring this offering to you purposefully to worship you and to give thanks to you for all that you have bestowed upon us, your people. And we ask, Lord God, that you would accept it, but not only this offering, but our lives and our hearts too, for the glory of your name. Amen. Now, I'm sure you, like me, are very thankful that God has provided us people like Raymond and all our musicians here and all our choir members. And they're now going to uh, lead us in worship uh, with the peace, God, the uncreated one.
Absolutely beautiful. The words are just so meaningful, and you know, I keep find it hard to speak sometimes when I hear music like that. Uh, we've got a lovely opportunity to stand with the choir and with the musicians now and worship God through the peace cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less.
We turn to God's Word as found in the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, and we're going to read just a few verses from verse 16. You'll find that on page 1188 of your Pew Bible. Page 1188. And commencing at chapter 5, verse 16. Let us hear the Word of God. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen. And thanks be to God for his holy and inspired word. Verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Guys, I wonder, could you put the stuff up on the screens? There's one slide up on there. We're thinking about the practice of thankfulness, the discipline of thankfulness. Thankfulness is like a balm for the soul. It's therapeutic. When we learn to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you Lord for everything, we are on the way to being, I suggest, a healthier people. A healthier and happier people. The story goes of a man who had always been rather negative, uh, was constantly bothered by things. His health was poor. The world was in a terrible state. His business was failing. He always complained about himself and his circumstances. But one day people noticed that he'd changed considerably. He was bubbly. He was vibrant. He was enthusiastic. And the seemingly the picture of health. And when asked to explain the change in his life, he said this, it's the exercise and the discipline of giving thanks. We're really good at whinging here in Northern Ireland, aren't we? There's something in us at times. Listen to how the rest of this story goes. Every night in bed this man thought of all the good things that had happened to him that day. Things he would, then he would pull up the bed covers around his neck and he would say, Lord, thank you for everything. He would turn out the light and he would peacefully go to sleep. You see, the act of praise and thanksgiving is incredibly healing and health producing for those who practice it. And there's three things I want to try and pull out from this verse, verse 18 of First Thessalonians 5 uh, for us today. The first is that thanksgiving encourage us, uh, encourages us and also deposits within us a grateful spirit. Paul quickly asserted that the will of God is for you and I to have a grateful spirit. That in everything you give thanks. A grateful spirit makes a person happy and makes life feel better. Now I know, because I know this personally, when the proverbial hits the fan in your life and things are seem to be spiraling out of control, 
the hardest thing for you and for me to do is to go into a room, I put on a YouTube praise piece with lyrics, and I start singing to God. I was doing it yesterday in the prayer room for an hour on the first session. And if you'd come to that window, you would have heard John howling. Like an old dog. Faith sounds better than me singing. But the Lord knows where my heart is. And I know it's a hard thing to do when you're in that tough, tough place. But please believe me, it, this is in Scripture. It's written in Scripture for a reason. Just think of the things that you and I can be grateful for on a daily basis. Our daily bread. Our apples that came to our door for no rhyme or reason. Leslie filled the sink last night with them and there were so many apples in the sink they were peeking out over the water. Jesus said he took some bread and he gave thanks to God in front of them all and then he broke it and they began to eat. He gave thanks. What about the people sitting around you? Your husband, your wife, your children, your daughters, your sons, your friends, your Christian friends. Listen to what Paul writes in Romans 1. Verse 8, first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. See the wee butterflies? Do you see the wee notelets about here? They've been put in here for a reason. To give thanks, to let you know that somebody is thankful for you. That they're thinking of you, that they're praying for you, that we are one in Christ Jesus. What about, well, you probably think, well, is God using me when I go from this place to spread the word of God? Yes, he is. Every time we go out, go into our school classroom, go into our office, we're there as witnesses, as ambassadors of Christ. What about when we win a victory over temptation? We've got things to give thanks to God for. And what about the unspeakable gift of Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son? I met a girl walking up the town today with her big coley dog. And we were talking about what's happening in Israel and Palestine at this time in Lebanon and Ukraine. The news reels, their internet, our BBC websites, etc., are just filled with negativity. The only good thing is that Ireland won last night. But we forget about the countless numbers of people who are working in the background in charities, who are who are our, our next door neighbours, who are a blessing to us to the people who are sitting in, in the pews, people who don't even get involved in the crime out there. There's millions of people, and yet all we see is the one or two. Minister tells of a man who was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. He was an empty shell. Someone suggested that he could avoid further breakdown by practicing the discipline of giving thanks. He was told to make a list of everyone who had helped him down through the years. He was told to fill his mind with thanksgiving for all the things that these people had done for him. And the third step included sitting down and writing one letter of thanks to one of those people on his list. And he thought of this lady who had taught him in the classroom who was now a very old woman. And he wrote to her and expressed how much he loved and appreciated her teaching and her counsel throughout those years. And several days and a week or two passed and then he received a reply handwritten calling him by his boyhood name, Dear Will. 
as I recall all the children I have taught over the years, you are the only one who ever took time to write and to thank me for what I did as a teacher. You have made me so very happy. I've read your letter through tears. I wonder if you've been there. I've been there. When a little handwritten note look comes through the door or letter. That's why I keep them. And read them on a regular basis. You have made me so happy. I have read your letter through tears. I keep it by my bedside and read it every night. I shall cherish it until the day I die. And so thrilled by this reply, the man wrote letter after letter until he had written written at least 500 letters of thanks. He discovered that during these months he had changed the practice and the therapy of thanksgiving had lifted him above himself and opened to him the secret of true living. So the first thing that we can do is is, is that thanksgiving encourages us to have a grateful spirit. It deposits a grateful spirit within each one of us. The second is that thanksgiving develops a positive attitude. You've heard me say already from this pulpit over the last six months that really, really, and I mean this in the nicest way, you see negative people around me. It's not that I don't love them. God tells me to love tells us all to love people. But if there's somebody constantly nyattering in my ear, I'm going to turn my back and walk away. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, Paul said in effect, in spite of all that may happen, you're to continue being grateful, you're to maintain a positive attitude. The Amplified Bible puts it this way, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Paul did not thank God for the possession of material abundance. He did not have an affluent standard of life. He had learned to be content in whatever state he found himself in. He did not thank God for an easy time. For he tells us in 2 Corinthians he had a thorn in his flesh. He knew the bitterness of persecution. He was stoned in Lystra. He was driven from Thessalonica. He was rejected at Athens. He was jailed in Philippi. He was apprehended at Caesarea. And then he was taken to Rome as a prisoner. And he was shipwrecked en route. He suffered imprisonment. Was released and then jailed again. And put in a dungeon at Rome. And finally martyred. Paul did not thank God for any superior standing among others. He was not like the Pharisee who prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. See, the discipline of thanksgiving had developed a positive attitude that enabled Paul to forget the bad and to be grateful for the good. I wonder if this happened out in uh, Jam this morning, but there was a Sunday school teacher asked her class what they were thankful for and one little uh, boy replied, my glasses. But why, she asked. Because they keep the boys from jumping on me and the girls from kissing me. Positive attitude. Can always find something for which to be grateful. I got new specs the other week. And it's transformed my driving at night. It's unbelievable. God is good. Praise the God for uh, opticians. And so thanksgiving enables us to see the positive side of things. And with so much bad news circulating, especially over the last 48 hours, 
We need to practice the discipline. Yes, it is a discipline because it's hard to do. So that we may see the positive side of things. For example, consider the millions of people last year who were not involved in crime. Did not file for divorce. Did not get involved in a riot or disorder. It's the vast majority of people. And yet we sort of go, oh, we're focusing on this. And then we get down. So Thanksgiving develops a positive attitude. And finally, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving produces an attractive witness as we go from here, as we come to grow, to learn more from God's word, and then to put it into practice as we go. We become attractive to other people. We all want to be attractive, don't we? Oh, come on. Admit it. Us guys have never, when we're in our teenage years, sat in the mirror and gone, never? Or you've done your hair? Guys, I wish. Have you ever seen guys a woman who wears very little makeup, who dresses very well, but not provocatively, but there's something about them. And I'm sure you ladies have seen somebody else like that, like a man or, or another person. There's something you can't put your finger on. People in the West here, we spend millions each year on makeup and cosmetics. Christ wants his witnesses to be attractive to. And I'm going to suggest to you that it is thanksgiving and praise that make us the kind of witnesses that will attract others to Jesus. Do you realize that as you've come in through this door, you're extending your life between five and ten years compared to people who don't go to church? Research proves it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Somebody wrote it up on the, 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 the prayer wall in there. If you're going through for a cup of coffee, go in through the minister's room and look at the prayers. There's actually a wee prayer journal as well. Look at the, the blessings tree where people have written prayers on it. But it says, the joy of the Lord in brackets, joy mind, is your strength. You know, Paul may not have been eloquent. His physical appearance may not have been striking, but his witness always attracted people. He drew men and women wherever he went, all along the roads and the highways and the sea routes. He journeyed from Jerusalem all the way to Rome to his death. The act of praise and thanksgiving, even practiced in a prison cell, had made Paul an attractive witness. And it will do the same for you and me too. So, in closing, are you in the dumps? Has your life lost its glow? Do you no longer feel that you have a purpose in life? Has your world gone sour? C.S. Spurgeon said this, that more flies are attracted by honey than by vinegar. I know this is really hard when you're feeling down and life is crashing in around you, but the act of practicing the discipline of praise and thanksgiving every day for one full month will cause you to make a wonderful discovery that you will develop a grateful spirit. Your attitude will change. In fact, this is something that Ryan and I did when his daughter Hannah was in hospital each morning. We went into his room and we worshipped God together in the midst of tragedy. It will change your attitude forever. And you will become radiant 
and positive, and the joy of the Lord will become your strength, and in turn you will shine brightly for Christ Jesus our Lord and King. That's my prayer for you. Wherever God has placed you, and the people that he's placed you around you, that you will shine, that you will be people of thanksgiving, that you will be people as joyment declares, people of joy and thanksgiving and praise. So let's take a moment to pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for the challenge of your word here today. Thank you, Father, for the reality and the truth that thanksgiving brings us into your into your courts, into your outer courts. And praise allows us to draw right into your very presence. And so, Father, we, we thank you for your call upon each one of our lives. Help, help us to burn brightly for you. But help us also, Lord God, to be keep our eyes open around us. Father, we're so aware of the war-torn areas in our world, and especially over the last few hours, what has happened in Palestine and Israel and Lebanon. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for your peace, your shalom. Father, we confess that we are a broken people, a broken race. Father, forgive us for our warmongering. Father, open opportunities for diplomatic means to break through in this area in the Middle East and in Ukraine and Russia and Syria and the South China Sea and North Korea, Lord God, and other places where people are quite literally at one another's throats. And help us, Lord God, also to remember that nothing is impossible with you to seek you in our prayers, not just for, for things that impact us and our families, Lord God, but the wider world as well. And help us to shine brightly in this world for the glory of your name. Through Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to stand and praise because this praise piece is a praise piece. O oh, praise the name of the Lord our God.
May grace, mercy, peace and thankfulness from God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you henceforth and forevermore. Amen.